Remember, everything is right until it's wrong. You'll know when it's wrong. Ernest Hemingway. The origin of the human race has probably been one of the most debated issues in our history. As well as in evolutionary biology over the last few decades, and controversy about the origin of human beings continues to rage even today, nearly 150 years after the publication of Charles Darwin's *The Origin of Species*. So, where did humans come from? Creationism and evolution are two popular theories of how humankind came to be. Advocates of the creationism perspective continue to argue that the biblical story of creation, in which we were created in an instant by a god, is as viable and as valid as the evolutionary perspective. While scientists largely assume that the argument should be over and that the evolutionary explanation is supported by scientific evidence, as we unravel more mysteries from our past. More questions to be answered. Does the theory of evolution best explain where life came from? Homo sapiens is an evolving species, but some researchers speculated that DNA shows unmistakable signs of planning that evolution alone cannot explain. Highly intelligent humans seem to appear almost overnight. About 200,000 years ago. So, how did we progress so quickly from primitive apes to highly advanced beings? Is it possible that another species deliberately manipulated our genetic code? Every day, more and more physicists, anthropologists, geneticists, and historians are pushing the boundaries of accepted theories. Suggesting that extraterrestrials indeed influenced mankind, perhaps their impact is even more powerful. As genetic engineering continues to evolve, from discovering DNA to sequencing the human genome to cloning animals and even genetically modifying human embryos, we should ask ourselves: Are we playing God, or maybe are we playing alien? So, if you're among those people who wonder what would be the possibility that a more intelligent life form played a role in developing our DNA, stay tuned as we'd like to share with you some of the remarkable discoveries being discussed in the scientific community, so you can develop your own opinion about if our genetic makeup is more than just a random hand of cards. Millions of years before modern history, agriculture, and civilization, the world stage was set for one creature's unprecedented rise. The story of human evolution began about seven million years ago, and over time, an ensemble cast of over 20 early human species came to the fore. Most of them became extinct, while others might have been ancestors to today's humans. While a cast of over 20 hominid species have walked the earth, only one still remains. According to the theory of humanity evolution, Homo sapiens, shaped by millions of years of evolution, embarked on a long journey of exploration and industry. To create the world that we know today, Darwinism is a theory of biological evolution developed by the English naturalist Charles Darwin and others, stating that all species of organisms arise and develop through the natural selection of small inherited variations that increase the individual's ability to compete, survive, and reproduce. The missing link is a term often thrown around by the media to describe fossils that are believed to bridge the evolutionary split between higher primates, such as apes and humans. The term "missing link" 
was first used in 1851 by Charles Darwin's mentor, Charles Lyell, to describe samples of fossils he had found. Eight years later, Darwin published The Origin of Species, in which contrary to popular belief, he never used the term while describing his theory of human evolution. Over the years, many missing link fossils have been revealed to be hoaxes. And the most famous was the Piltdown Man. In 1912, a skull and jawbone found in a gravel pit in England were declared by scientists to be concrete proof of the connection between humans and apes. The missing link. But the Piltdown Man was not the long-awaited missing link as more than 40 years later, the pit-down man was proven to be a fraud. It was nothing more than the lower jawbone of an orangutan combined together with the skull of a modern human. According to Darwin's theory of evolution, nature selects traits that will give species an advantage. If we compare primates and today's humans, we can see that primates are much stronger than us. Not just that, but they also have much better night vision than humans and walk more efficiently than humans. These are all advantages, beneficial adaptations that should have been passed on to future generations and versions of the species, according to Darwin's theory. Maybe we can say that we didn't need all of that, because we have larger brains. We are smarter and more intelligent. Actually, Darwin's theory says we should have both. Intelligence and strength. That would clearly give us even bigger advantage over every other species on the planet. It does make sense, according to Darwin's theory, that we might sacrifice our ability to eat, drink, and breathe all at the same time in exchange for the ability to speak. Maybe it would have been impossible for nature to evolve a throat capable of performing both functions. On the other hand, the ability to speak allows us to communicate much more efficiently than other primates. But still, it remains a mystery how our throat was so radically redesigned in the evolution between Australopithecus and Homo erectus. We lack the fossils, another missing link, to show how this transition actually happened. The greatest mystery of all is why we are fair-skinned and hairless. The primates that we are supposedly descended from all have dark skin and hair. Dark skin protects primates from sunlight, while their hair protects them from the sun and also from extreme cold. If humans could not make clothes to protect us from the sun and find or create shelters to protect us from the cold, we would potentially die of sunburn or all freeze to death. Dark skin and hair are basic adaptations for survival on this planet, and they are features that would possibly lead to the extinction of our species. If our intelligence and ability to create clothing and shelters did not compensate for them. Could the existence of pale-skinned, hairless humans along with the many so-called missing links question some parts of Darwin's theory of evolution? Besides all of that, humans have an extra organ, appendix, that we no longer use. We also have more difficulty giving birth than other animals. Our head-to-body ratio is off the charts. We are completely out of place in our environment and do not blend or camouflage to our surroundings. Instead, we adapt our surroundings to us. All of that leaves us with more questions. Why primates are well adapted to the planet's environment, while we are not adapted to it at all. If we didn't evolve from primates, where did we come from?
Can the coding of the human genome also decode the origin of the humanity? The Human Genome Project was an international research effort to determine the sequence of the human genome and identify the genes that it contains. The main goals of the Human Genome Project were to provide a complete and accurate sequence of the 3 billion DNA base pairs that make up the human genome. The results of the Human Genome Project would allow researchers to begin to understand the blueprint for building a person. As researchers learn more about the functions of genes and proteins, that knowledge would have a major impact in the fields of medicine, biotechnology, and the life sciences. So, for example, if we could identify all the genes that make up a human, then we can use them as medicine and give them to people that have genetic defects. When the Human Genome Project started, it was estimated that there were going to be over 100,000 human genes. Science got all excited about it. Guess who else was interested? The pharmaceutical industry. Why? 100,000 genes means 100,000 new drugs. As they started with the project, they recognized one important fact. In evolution, there's an ancient picture of what is called the Tree of Life, or Universal Tree of Life. And on that tree are presented the organisms on this planet, in a hierarchy of more advanced and more advanced organisms. The bottom of the tree makes the most primitive organism on the planet. Bacteria to the top of the tree, where presumably we are located, man. So before they start to work with the human genome with over 100,000 genes, the scientists had to test out the mechanism of counting how many genes are present in an organism. To do that, they decided to start with more primitive organisms with fewer genes, as it would make it easier for them to see how many genes were in the genome of that organism. The first organism they worked with was a miniature worm, less than a half a millimeter in length, very primitive organism. It turns out it had about 20,000 genes. That was exactly what the scientists expected. Primitive organism, less number of genes. More up to the tree, more complex life forms, it'll be a greater number of genes. The next organism they checked the genome on was profoundly more complex than the worm. It was the fruit fly. But when they did the genome, they were shocked as this very complex organism had apparently only 15,000 genes. 5,000 less than the primitive worm they studied first. That didn't cause them to stop. They continued and the Human Genome Project was completed in 2003 when the results came out, and it blew everybody's mind, because they started with the expectation there are going to be over 100,000 genes. And how many did they find? 20,000 genes. The same number of genes in a 1,271-celled miniature worm as they are in a 50 trillion celled human body. The conclusion is that reading the genes does not determine the character of evolution. Genes are not the measurement of evolution. And now we have to take another look and ask ourselves, what is evolution based on, if it's not based on the genes? In 2013, Physicist Vladimir I. Sherbak of National University of Kazakhstan and astrobiologist Maxim A. Makakov carried out a mathematical analysis of the human genome, and they claimed that in human DNA, there is a mathematical code, so sophisticated, it simply cannot be explained by the evolution process. They claim to have found the use of decimal notation, logical transformations, and the use of the abstract symbol of zero in DNA code. The research published in the science journal Icarus 
pointed out that human DNA is ordered in mathematical, and it has perfectly ordered patterns of ideographs, which means our DNA uses symbols to express physical concepts similar to how we use them to convey the language. Assuming that it was somehow created randomly by nature, the Kazakhstan scientists also suggested something very radical – that humans may have an extraterrestrial stamp embedded into our genetic code, a mathematical message that would not be explained by Darwin's theory of biological evolution. That would be something like a possible intelligent signal within the human genetic code. So if that was true, it would be similar to when SETI, in 1977, received an unknown and strong radio signal from space. The mysterious WOW signal. Their radical theory suggests our bodies are waiting for a signal from those creators. And when we get it, our biology will follow. Perhaps that makes sense for SETI to expand the scope as per those scientists. One of the suggested alternative to radio is the biological media, as they believe there is a possible intelligent signal within the human genetic code. Genomic DNA is already used on Earth to store non-biological information. Though smaller in capacity, but stronger in noise immunity is the genetic code. Once fixed, the code might stay unchanged over cosmological timescales. In fact, it's the most durable construct known. Therefore, it represents an exceptionally reliable storage for an intelligent signature. Makakov and Sherbach contend that life throughout the galaxy may have been spread by intelligent design. That instead of life developing as a result of random processes, maybe extraterrestrials had a hand in it. They suggest that genetic code appears that it was invented outside the solar system already 7 billion years ago. This idea is not new, it's a variation on the theory of panspermia, which claims that life did not arise on Earth from chemicals, but was seeded from life elsewhere in the universe. But of course that begs the question. Even if the genetic code is ultimately considered the handprint of an extraterrestrial grand designer, then who designed the designer? Don't miss the next episode of The Hidden History of the Human Origin, Alien Life and Evolution, where we will ask more questions. Did aliens seed life on Earth? Is there any evidence supporting the directed panspermia hypothesis? Did alien life engage in development of our own? What can the Rh negative factor tell us about our origin? How did human culture go from primitive caves to sophisticated civilizations so quickly? Where is the missing link? Who's responsible for the great leap forward in our intelligence? Thank you for watching this episode and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. We really hope you subscribe and if you'd like to be notified of future releases, just hit the bell button. Leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on all of this and what topics would you like to explore in our future videos.